Hello and welcome back to the Wandering Wind and welcome back to my podcast, The Truth Is. Today, I want to talk about what truth really is. The truth is not subjective. You know, in, in our world, we think to ourselves, oh, that's your truth. But then there's my truth. But really, when you get down to brass tacks, when you get down to the bare basics, when you get down to the foundation of the world, the truth is not subjective and it's not up to you or me to determine what the truth is. That's a bitter pill to swallow, I know. I know. But it has to be said that neither you nor I determine what truth is. You know who does determine what truth is? The one who is truth, the one who is life. (laughs) He who is faithful and true. Jesus Christ. You know, one of the things that um, I've read more than once in the Word, in the Bible, is Revelation 19.11. In fact, I want to go back to about verse 10. No, ver- nah, we'll start in verse 11, but I'll keep going. It says, I saw heaven standing open. Oh, this is out of the mm, NIV, just so you guys understand. Verse 11 says, I saw heaven standing open, and there before me was a white horse whose rider is called faithful and true. With justice he judges and wages war. His eyes are like blazing fire, and on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one knows but he himself. He is dressed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is, here we go, the Word of God. This is Jesus. This is a picture of Jesus coming in power at the end of days. This is a picture of Jesus, the Word of God, whose name is, whose writer is called, who is called faithful and true. He is not only faithful, he is the truth. He is, he is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. You know, Later on in my series, I will be talking about how Jesus is the way. How, how, um, how Jesus is the way and how sometimes it's not easy to follow his way, but that it is important that we do follow him. But the reason why I want to talk about the truth today is because honestly, there are a lot of people out there that deny that truth is not subjective. That truth has an objective root, an objective source, and that source is Christ himself. You know, we see today um, culture, man-made culture, redefining what things are, redefining biblical and fundamental truths about the world. Oh, oh, you want to talk about truths of the world and fundamentals? Talk about gender to someone who um, who believes that there are 52 different genders. Now, I'm not saying that your expression of who you are as an individual can't be different from anyone else. I'm not saying that your choices can't be different from other people. But don't deny the simple reality that biology is biology, and whether or not you've got One thing or another is not something you can just say, no, I don't, and it happens. Because if that were the case, we wouldn't need these transition therapies and transition surgeries to go from one to the other. Instead, you could just say to yourself, I am a man, and if if you were born a woman, then you'd just become a man because that's how easy it is. Since it's not that easy, obviously, it means it wasn't meant to be that way. Just saying, just saying. Another thing is that, you know, um, in the word, we never see, in, in a positive context, we never see gay couples. Now, this will probably get me, 
blast it on whatever social media people have that they want to rant about. But I'll be completely honest. You can choose whatever life you want for yourself. Don't call it biblical. You can choose to be gay. You can choose to be bi. You can choose to be whatever. Don't call it biblical. And don't put a label on it like, oh, well, I'm just a different gender because it, that doesn't, that, sorry, but that, that, that dog won't hunt. That horse won't gallop, you know. <laughs> that math ain't mathin', buddy. That math ain't mathin', as, as the kiddos say. You can say all you want that, oh, well, I feel, I feel. Well, guess what? To quote Ben Shapiro, although I don't really agree with him either, facts don't care about what you feel. Facts don't care about your feelings. And the fact of the matter is, if you were born a male, you're a male. If you're born a female, you're a female. You can't change it and you can't say it as otherwise because it's not. Even if you change the outside, if you go back in your DNA, you're still a man or a woman based on how what you were born like. Now I get that there are quirks of nature where sometimes someone's born and they got both sets, but that's a very rare occurrence. And usually you can tell based on internal structure which one is the real one and which one needs to be chopped off. Just saying. But even then, you've got to realize that there are plenty of people in this world who accept facts as facts and say that, well, I was born a man, therefore I am a man. I was born a woman, therefore I am a woman. Now, getting away from the hot button issues and going even further, Truth is not subjective, and that goes even further than just gender identity and politics when it comes to that. It comes to sin itself. The Bible calls anything that does not please God a sin. If you stole, you've sinned. If you cheated, you've sinned. If you've lied, you've sinned. If you had sex outside of marriage, you've sinned. If you've done something that, that's against the will of God, you have sinned. We see this time and time again in the Bible where the people of God go against God's will for them and they are called sinful and they are called wicked. In fact, they have several kings that are called wicked because all they do is sin. Now, if the reality is that sin is real and that sin is something that goes against what God's will is, and that that's the basic, bare-bones definition of it, then what does that come to with us? It means if we do anything, however slight, however small, however insignificant in our eyes, that goes against what God's will would be for us, which, based on the New Covenant, comes down to two things that, that are the root of everything good that we can do in God's, wit, in God's will. And that is, love God, love others. And all the laws fulfilled in these two commandments. So says the word of God. So says the I am. So says Jesus Christ, you know. So, if loving God and loving others fulfills the entirety of the law, then if I hate my brother because he's being a butthole today, I'm not following the will of God and I'm not fulfilling the law. If I love God, but sin, I'm not really loving God. I'm loving my sin more than I love God. If I love God, but only tolerate others, God, God doesn't say love and tolerate. He says love and love. He's very clear because he knows how we love to twist words around to mean what we think they need to mean. That's why having so many different translations, as it were, can get kind of problematic after a bit because we, we, we mince words when we should really be seeking intent rather than definitions. Um, that's why a lot of churches over time have gotten away from the King James Version. Because antiquated language or old words only muddy the issues that we're trying to trying to address and solve in the modern day. 
I'm not saying that it's all perfect. It's not. I'm not saying that um, the King James is an evil translation. It's not. It's good for its day, and it's good for some cases now. Um, I'm just saying that if we really want to be faithful to what God's calling is for what he wants us to do, which is love God and love others, then what we need to do is we need to seek intent and we need to seek the intent of God more than anything else. You know, the fact is sin is sin. Truth does not change based on who looks at it. You know, okay, hypothetical for a minute. Have a thought experiment with me. If I go out and commit a crime, if I go out and murder someone and come back and say, I never did that, does it change the fact that that person is dead and that I did it? No. No, it does not. The fact that that person died and that I was responsible is not changed just because my truth is I didn't do anything. My truth is I didn't murder anyone. That doesn't stop the fact that the other person suffered the consequence of my actions, no matter how I try and frame it. In that case, me saying, well, it feels good when I sin this way, doesn't neglect, doesn't cancel out the fact that that's still sin. It doesn't cancel out the fact that it's still wrong. It just means I'm enjoying my sin and so I'm allowing it to control me and I'm allowing it to rule me. You know, the Bible says, do not have two masters. Do not serve God. And, and the original word is mammon, which is a God for money, but it's really God in anything in the world, anything in the world. You can't do both. You can't serve God and the world. You can't serve God and yourself. You can't serve God and pleasure or God and money or God and someone else. You can't. You either serve God over here, doing right, doing just, loving mercy, acting kindly, or on the other side, you're doing everything wrong and everything bad. And it's sin. I know it's a hard pill, pill to swallow. I myself did not like the idea of putting together this message because I knew some people would not like it. But then I had to go, okay, but am I worried about what other people think or am I concerned with what God's will is? That's the question we all need to face, all right? Is what is God's will for us? How are we going to carry that out? And how are we seeking to know what his will is? How do you know what the truth is if you've never asked the one who knows the truth? You know, if you're never in prayer with the Father of all, then you can't know if this is truly right. And beyond that, if you're not in the Word of God, you know, there are so many wonderful ways to get into the Word of God nowadays. You've got the, the Bible app, which has all different translations in it. You've got the New, New Living Translation. You've even got simpler ones like the Easy English Translation. And if you really want to go a bit further, you've got the Passion, which I don't recommend if you want to learn stuff. But if you just want to know what it says in a plain way, the Passion is a good way to bring it down. And then when you go back, you understand a bit more. I would, I, would, I would suggest the Passion to be a supplement, or not the Passion Translation. Um, it's not the Passion Translation. It's a different one. Um, um, oh, gosh. My, pa my pastor is going to kill me. <laughs> I suggested the Passion. It, it's not the Passion. It's uh, the Message. Sorry. The Message. Do not go for the Passion Translation. Do not, do not, do not, do not. But if you, need, if you need something simplified even further than what something like the NLT does, go for the message. And then go back to your old translation. Because once you understand the verse, then you can read further. All right? That's what I do. I read something first in the NLT, and then I go a bit further with a more literal translation to get deeper into it. 
That's what I do. That's why I'm able to understand some things that I didn't before. But if you don't consult the things that hold the truth, then you'll never know the truth. And the truth is not up to you. It's not up to me. It's not up to our, our legal. It's not up to our government leaders. It's not up to our pastors even. You know, our pastors can say stuff, but if it doesn't line up with the will of God, your responsibility is to go up and say, um, in here it says this instead. I can't, I can't let you go without being able to know what the word actually says. That's our calling. You know, the, the Bible tells us to judge rightly between ourselves, you know, within the body, to know whether or not someone is acting right or if they need a, need correction, need um, to be brought to a knowledge of the truth. Because honestly, sometimes even us as Christians, we can fall by the wayside if we're not careful and we can end up falling into wrong teaching or wrong thinking. It doesn't happen as often if you're in Christ, but it can still happen because the world is so devious. They can even make the bad stuff look good. Look at addiction. Okay. All right. All right. You look at um, modern pop culture, music, movies, gaming, all that stuff. In modern pop culture, in those three areas, you see a whole lot of people engaging in behaviors that cause addiction, and yet you never see the negative consequences of it in that medium, not usually. Or even if you see negative consequences, it's never to the extremes that I've seen in real life talking with people that have been fighting this for 20 years and still can't win. 40 years and are on their deathbed. 50 years and have lost their family and have lost their job and are on the street. That's the reality that, me, that, that, that Hollywood and the gaming industry and the music industry won't tell you. And you know why? Because it's inconvenient for sales. It's inconvenient for profit. That's the thing. Truth is not subjective. And the fact that people love to just twist it just enough to make it attractive to you. That should give you a whole lot of problems. That should give you a whole lot to think about. The world will twist bad into good and sell it to you for a price because they think you, they think you'll buy it. Don't buy into the lie that the truth is whatever you make of it because it's not. Don't buy into the lie that if it feels good, it must be good. Physical pleasure feels good in the moment, but last, but the but the spiritual effects last forever. You know, I, I especially with promiscuity and and sexual immorality, I've heard it put this way. If you do that, you're you're merging your soul with that of another person. And it's like putting a s'more together. You can't separate a s'more perfectly after it's been put together. You're always gonna have bits of chocolate with a marshmallow and bits of marshmallow stuck to the to the graham cracker and so on and so forth until there's nothing you can do to separate it completely from each other. Nothing you can do about it. It's not. The same is true for sexual immorality, especially. You're, mer you're coming together as one flesh. And then when you separate that, it causes damage. It's not convenient to hear this. It's not. I know. But it's the truth. And the truth is not up to you or I to determine. It's for God to say this is what is true. You need to follow it. And that is why I think it is so important that we as Christians especially continue to share what the truth is. 
because it's only going to get worse over time. It's only going to get worse over time if we don't stop it now. It's already gotten worse. It's already gotten worse. We've got the LGBT, but now we've got the P trying to come in. We've got pedos trying to come in and say, oh, well, our preferences are a sexual preference too. No, it's not. It's just wrong. It's just immoral. It's a crime. But there's going to come a day where the world is going to say, okay, because the Bible describes a time where bad is called good and good is called bad. And I don't think we're too far off from the from that time. I don't know how long that time lasts before Jesus comes back. I know it lasts for at least seven years. I don't know if it lasts longer. But I know it at least will last seven years. And I don't know when that starts. But I know we're seeing the fruits of that beginning to blossom now. Because we're seeing movements where people who are complete deviants are saying, oh, well, I can be accepted into your group. No, you can't. I think of the uh, the scene, and I think it's Mean Girls or whatever, where, where the one lady is like, you can't sit with us. You can't sit with us. It's like, I want to tell that to every person that wants to come around and say, oh, well, I'm a Christian, but I also I also regularly engage in this sin. You can't sit with us. You're not Christian if you can't. If you can't, you're not a Christian and also immoral. You can't be. You can you can be you can be mortal, you can be imperfect, but you can't be actively engaging willfully in sin and be Christian. That's just my that's just my personal take on the whole thing. You can't do that. You'll lose your salvation that way. If you ever get it in the first place. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, bottom line, truth isn't up to you or I. Truth is for God to decide. You need to, you need, all of us need to realize we need to just ask him what, what is true and follow it. Otherwise, we're in danger of burning forever. That's all I got for you today. Thank you for watching. Thank you for liking. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for sharing. And thank you for being a part of this journey. I hope to see you guys again next time here on The Truth Is.